I love to share the stories that I had when I was little. And this is one I had when I was four and five years old. I used to read it when my sisters were at school. I'd sit down with my pile of books, right, while my mom was doing her stuff. But I really like this one. It's the story, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. He was a naughty little rabbit and got himself into trouble. But it teaches the important lesson of obeying. Okay, so are you ready? Here we go. Once upon a time, there, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put into a pie for, by Mrs. McGregor. Now, you run along and don't get into mischief. I have to go out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Currants are berries. <sighs> Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were very good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Mm-mm. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. He went just where his mama told him not to go. <gasps> Do you know any little boys and girls like that? Mm-hmm. Well, first he ate some lettuce and some French, from French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley to settle his tummy. <sighs> but round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes running among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that he might have got away altogether if, if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with beautiful brass buttons, and it was quite new. <sighs> Peter gave himself up for loss, and he shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and, and begged him not to observe himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a shut, with a sail, which he intended to pop on top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not been filled with water. <sighs> Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in that tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over very carefully, looking under each one. Presently, Peter sneezed. <laughs> Mr. McGregor was after him in no time at all, and he tried to put his foot on top of Peter, but he jumped out the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter, so he went back to work. <sighs> Peter, 
Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying some peas and beans to her family in the woods. Peter asked her the way to the gate. But she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he came more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was Sit staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the sound of a hoe. Scratch! 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 Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out. He climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeked over. First thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing the onions. His back was turned toward Peter. And beyond him was the gate. <sighs> Peter got down very, very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down on the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in two weeks. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well that evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea. She gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Mm -hmm. Yep. Peter's mommy said there are places you can go. Where did she say he could go? Let's see. Mama said that they could go to the field or down the lake. Right? They could play in the field. They could play in the field, but where weren't they supposed to go? Mr. McGregor's garden. Our mommies and daddies are wherever the big people are that are taking care of us. They tell us things that we can go, right? You can play here. You may not play there. You may eat this, but you may not eat that, right? Because they want to keep us safe. Now, Peter's mommy knew what was good for him. Why? Because his daddy had gone into that garden, and his daddy had been, got caught by Mr. McGregor, and his wife made a rabbit pie out of him. He ate him. Mama didn't want that to happen to any of the children. 
Hmm. No, so she said, you stay out of that garden. But did Peter listen? No, he did not. And he lost his clothes again. <gasps> oh, his mama had to work hard to buy those things. But he was careless, right? So that night when everybody was having a good supper, what was Peter doing? He was in bed. His tummy hurt. He was he was tired. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you think he learned his lesson? Mm -hmm. You know what I think? I think he probably didn't. Because I know some little boys and girls like that too. We had a little boy in our school like that once. Mm -hmm. We did. He never obeyed in kindergarten. His name was Sonny. Sonny never obeyed. And he wouldn't stay in his seat. He went to his schoolwork. And when his mama told him to do things and not do things, you know what? Sonny didn't obey. Well, one day, one day when he got off the bus down by Eldon's, mm -hmm. His mama was across the street. That's a very busy road, isn't it? And his mama says, Sonny, stay there. His brother was there, and the other children were there at the bus stop. His mother says, Sonny, stay. But Sonny didn't obey, and he ran across that busy street. And a taxi hit him and ran right over his foot. And he had a big old cast. It's whole leg. He couldn't come to school for a while, but you know what? His mama got tired of having him at home, and she sent him to school. Mm -hmm. And after a while, he got the cast taken off, but he had to go to the, he had to have doctors um, operate on him lots of times. I think three times they had to operate on his foot because it wouldn't heal right, because Sonny just what couldn't find a good doctor, and, and Sonny was, wasn't being obedient. Three times the doctors had to cut his foot open to fix his foot. Because mm -hmm. Sonny didn't want to obey. But then, you know what happened? As he got bigger, Sonny still didn't obey. But you know what Miss Susan said? Sonny, you can't come to Roca Solida anymore because you don't obey. He was just like little Peter Rabbit. Does Miss Susan want you to be that way? We all do foolish things, but what do we need to do? Learn, right? When you do something foolish, say, I'm not going to do that one again, right? If your mama tells you not to go somewhere, what do you do? Don't go there, right? If your mama says, don't eat that, you don't eat that. If your mama says, don't touch, what does that mean? Don't touch. Because your mama wants to keep you safe, just like Peter's mama wanted to keep him safe. And little Sonny's mom wanted to keep him safe, too. Mm -hmm. Ch do you remember the verse we learned? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is 